I am Sean Webb, and this is your superior self. Hi, this is Rock Goddess, and I am rolling with your superior self. Hi, this is Dave Meltzer, and this is your superior self. Hi, this is Zach Poitra, and this is your superior self. Hi, this is Paul Selig, and this is your superior self. What's up, everybody? I'm Aubrey Marcus, and this is your superior self. What is up, Superior Nation? Welcome back. I'm Trey Downs, and this is Your Superior Self. Thank you guys for downloading. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Very fired up. Very excited to be able to present uh, this conversation with today's guest, Paul Edzik, who is from Australia, and he's, he, he worked as a model for several years in Australia and in the United States. He's worked in the film industry as a production coordinator and an assistant director on major films, including The Matrix and Superman Returns. But that's not why he's here today. Paul is actually a gifted intuitive, and he can give a person a crystal clear perspective on both the current situation and the ultimate purpose of one's life. And his reading I guess it's a reading. It was more like a conversation between the two of us. But he, he gave me some clear insight and some really great feedback on the podcast and where I'm headed in life. And he is just uh, he's just like one of those guys that are that are just so positive and they get you fired up about life and, and where you're at currently in your adventure and your journey. And I learned about Paul through uh, the book titled The Gift Within Us by Marianne Borer. But Marianne's book is more like the white pages for highly intuitive individuals who are doing great things in people's lives and that you need to know these people and you need to get reach out to them and, and find out more information and, and ways that you can contact them if you need help in your any particular area of your life. I highly suggest you pick up the book. Um, I have a couple of guests that are coming on from the book and you'll be able to kind of, I, I don't know, I, you'll be able to hear their stories and what they're about here. Like today I have... Uh, Paul on the show, who is very, very special. His ability to, um, you know, to I guess to hone in what the universe is trying to tell us, right? That we can't hear because we're so uh, distracted by the external noises, external um, distractions that we can't hear for ourselves. And he does that for me. He, he kind of reminds me that I need to go inward and I need to listen more to um, the voice that is inside of me. That is being called from the universe, and I, I highly believe in that. Um, the voice is there; we just don't listen to it. And we also talk about the law of attraction, and uh, that's actually I want to. I want you guys to listen to this real quick. We have the ability to manifest what we want in our lives, and to have what we want in life, and to prosper, and to be happy, and to be healthy. And when you really deep down connect to that you understand that that yes I, I feel that my inner beings really feeling this wonderful connection that we do have with the universe but we live in a world where we're being bombarded constantly about things that are going wrong or that um we are out of control of things that things are happening to us rather than we are actually creating it and we get a bit lost with it. And I, I try to help clients and family friends or f friends of mine that are a bit sort of lost with whatever they might be going through in life. And I always remind them that you are an extension of the universe. You are, you are, um, you basically are the universe in a human body. And the energy that flows through us and everything that we see with our eyes is this loving, prosperous, well-being energy. It's like a stream that just constantly flows. Ah, yes. The good old law of attraction. The thing that you hear about, but you don't know how to apply to your life. We talk about that in this episode, how you can apply it and how you can measure it and how you can fully see for yourself that it is a law, a law, something that is that is <laughs> that is going to happen in your life it's not a hypothesis it's not a theory it's the law of attraction yeah it's pretty pretty great information but before we get into it i want to kind of announce that i've changed my website it is no longer your superior it is traydowns.com it's a lot easier i guess 
that you guys can head over there and contact me if you need to. Leave me a message. I will get that email and I will respond back to you. I love hearing about your stories and about the inspirations and possible guest ideas. Let me know what kind of books you guys are reading and what is helping you inspire you to become your superior self. Follow me on social media, Instagram, tdowns80, and on Twitter at Downs Trey. Check out the community that I'm building over on Facebook, Your Superior Self, where I post uh, behind the scenes photos of my uh, behind the scenes actions that are helping me propel me in that uh, in in the direction that I want to go in my life. Um, more so, running and kids and things like that. Just some positivity that needs to be uh, expressed, especially nowadays. But yeah, this is an amazing conversation. I'm very excited for you guys. Please keep an open mind. I think that that is the best way to be. Keep an open mind and, and just kind of see if we, what we're talking about makes you curious. And then when it makes you curious, you go and you research the, those types of subjects, those topics that we discuss, and you find out for yourself what it means and what it, how you can apply it to your life. Yeah, buddy. Well, I'm not going to keep you waiting anymore. Without further ado, here's my conversation with the great and powerful Paul Edzik. Uh, hello, my name is Paul Edzik, and this is Your Superior Self, and I'm looking forward to our wonderful conversation. Paul, I'm looking forward to this, man. This is amazing. I mean, you got a lot, you got to be feeling the pressure. I just get, I get nothing but rave reviews about you. Well, um, I'm, I'm always so humbled when I hear um, people talking about me or giving such wonderful um, reviews about myself. Uh, look, I, I, I think I'm just like everyone else. Um, I just somehow seem to have a um, ability or the intuitiveness to be able to do what I do. And um, I do my best to be able to help people with it and, you know, um, give what I can. I always say to people, the universe is presenting me something and this is what I offer and that's all I can do. I, I'm not special. I'm not magic. It's just here to be able to offer a particular, um, you know, ability that helps mm -hmm. people get to where they want to. And mm -hmm. if I get to do that, I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to do. That's awesome, man. I love that. And, and one thing I had to sh give a shout out to, uh, I'm, in, I'm in Baltimore. You're in Australia, right? Yes. And you're wearing an Under Armour shirt, which is pretty phenomenal. I am. I know. I was scrambling this morning to get ready because it's morning here for me. And I was like, oh my God, what's what's in my closet? I was better quick get it out and so forth. I just threw it on. So <laughs> You're talking about coincidence, man. You know, Baltimore, Under Armour. I think that's great. Thanks for supporting us. <laughs> yeah, well, I was probably also intuitively just connecting. So that's probably what happened. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. So you have, I, I found out about you through... Uh, Mary Ann Boer's book, uh, The Gift, and I think it's The Gift Within Us, and yes. your section in there really was, you know, fantastic. It talked about your your gifts and your story, basically. Um, oh, and I was very, I was very uh, impressed, and I was very, um, it made me curious to talk to you more. So I reached out, and you were kind enough to reply back and come on the show. So I'm very excited about this conversation. Why don't um why don't we why don't we do this? So you are a psychic medium, correct? Correct. Um, there are so many different ways of describing someone what they do, and you know, I, I to put it all in one category, I like to say intuitive because it sort of allows for most people that might not you know understand what a medium, what is that, what's psychic, and so forth. So for some reason, um, I when I was a child. Uh, I had many abilities. Uh, you have different like clear audience type of um, abilities, which is being able to hear things. And there's all different categories. Um, in my case, I, I have about four um, of these um, abilities where I see things, I hear things, I'm able to touch things and I'm able to foresee the future and sort of connect to non-physical. So. Um, yeah, I have quite a lot of um, abilities. Um, they don't always, when you, I'm helping people or I'm reading for people, um, it doesn't always all at once show up. It comes in different waves. So sometimes with a particular client or a person or wherever I may be, I might be seeing things more so than I might be hearing things. So it just, it varies. It's not something 
you can really control. It's basically what the universe is offering you and it is what you're at that point able to interpret. Mm, what the universe is offering. Um, so you, you discovered this at a young age, right? Like you were like, there, I think that part of the story is where you're showing up at the, your mom is taking you to the grocery store and you're coming up to people. And, and I think there's an example in there where you, you tell a lady who do, you do not know that she needs to leave her husband. And she's like pretty, you know, empowered by that. Right. Like she felt very like, how did this kid know this? You know, like, well, exactly. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, it, and I think for my, uh, particularly for my mother, because my mother's quite intuitive herself. And um, I don't know, in the background is actually my grandmother. I can grab the photo of her. Um, and it, I think at that point, um, I think I was about six or seven years old. I, I can't remember um, when we were at the grocery store. And um, basically um, I did walk up to a lady and I said a few things. Um, my mother asked the lady apparently, and I said something like, on the terms of your husband's a very bad man. And um, I don't know what else I said. Maybe I said, I'll, oh, you need to leave. But I don't think I said so much that because I was only probably six, sure. seven years old at the time. So, but even that actual, um, those words that came out for her, it meant quite a, um, quite a lot because obviously there was something going on. And the lady started crying. My mother ran up thinking, what's going on? And the lady just said to her, apparently, that whatever he said was exactly what I needed to hear. And um, well, at least you had support that, from your mom, though, right? Like, yeah, well, at least your mom was, was like, like, oh, my God, God, he's nuts. You know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's wrong with this child? And I think it's also because she she has abilities and it's sort of in both sides of family, my mother's side and my father's side. Um, so we, she's aware of the abilities that people have, but I think it was a bit quite a shock that I was so um, well connected to it. So um, there was another case actually when I was in New York. Um, again, I always had, I watch what I say now to people or um, I try to sort of um, offer it. I never will say anything until I know that the person will be okay with it. But I was in a bookstore in um, near, uh, where was it? It was at uh, uh, Union Square uh, in New York. And I, I there's a wonderful bookstore I used to go to. I can't remember the name. And I was sitting in there once reading and there was a lot of crystals and all these wonderful things that they used to sell. And there was a lady that was next to me, to the, behind me, and I really couldn't see her, but all of a sudden I got a vision happening of the son, uh, a baby child, a little boy, and, um, well, not the son, sorry, the, uh, the sunrise. And um, I, I think it was another, I, I did get something else I can't re recall right now. And then I knew that I was picking up on someone. So I turned around, I was looking around and I, I saw a lady was standing next to me, she was pregnant. And then I was arming and arming, do I say something to this woman? You know, who am I to start, you know, telling someone something about their life? And so, but I, I, I thought, okay, she's in the store. She's obviously open to a lot of um, understandings about um, energy and so forth. So I asked the lady, um, would, can I help you um, with some questions or can I offer you something that um, you might want to ask? I have the abilities of intuitiveness. And she said, sure. So I just said to her, um, I feel you're gonna, uh, your son is going to be born tomorrow morning when the sun starts to um, rise. Um, and uh, I said something else I cannot remember. And then she was really quite um, excited about it. And she said to me, oh, wow, that's amazing that you could see that. And um, I actually don't know what it's going to be, whether it's going to be a girl or a boy. And she said, do you mind if I take your number and I'll let you know? I said, please do. So um, she took my number and um, the next day in the afternoon, I got a call from a gentleman asking me, am I Paul? I said, yes. And he, he said that um, I, I want to let you know that I'm the husband of the lady that you had seen in the shop yesterday. And she wanted to let you know that our baby boy was born on sunrise this morning and she was so excited uh, to let you know that that's what happened. And um, she wants to invite you to the 
the brisk or something like that. I'm not sure what, uh, I think it was because- And she named him Paul. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. And um, I, the, the background was, uh, I think she was Jewish. So they wanted to invite me to one of their um, uh, wonderful celebrations. And I said, thank you. And yeah, so things like that happen. It's like, I don't get to control a lot of times what's coming, but mm -hmm. it shows up and then I have to decide whether I share it with someone that might be there and then. So that's interesting. Sorry, that was a long story. No, no. I, <laughs> dude, I love it. I, this is a this is a long form conversation, man. Like whatever you want to talk about, we can talk about. Um, the one thing that I did pick up on your website, though, a, a lot of um, uh, sending energies out into the world, right? Like sending your energy out into the world and bringing back something, like making, like creating your life the way that you want it. Like you believe in that, correct? Oh, a hundred percent. Um, again, there are so many teachings out there and so many wonderful people out there that help people with, um, whatever they're going through in their life and, uh, guidance or whatever you like to sort of call that. And I'm a big believer that we are eternal beings and that we are the creators of our own reality. And what that means to me is that we are these amazing human beings in these wonderful physical bodies but it's not just the bodies that we are we are multi-dimensional beings we have non-physical elements so we're an extension of source universe uh, god energy whatever you call it it doesn't matter it probably needs all the same thing um and we tend to forget that or most of us forget that and somehow at an earlier age i reconnected to that idea and i did have some wonderful teachers along the way particularly here in sydney a lady um she basically used to do um like tea leaves and coffee uh, cup readings and i learned quite a lot from her because i was trying to understand what i was feeling and through her teachings and through what i've come to understand during this period of doing what i do that we have the ability to manifest what we want in our lives and to have what we want in life and to prosper and to be happy and to be healthy. And when you really deep down connect to that, you understand it, that yes, I, I feel that my inner being is really feeling this wonderful connection that we do have with the universe. But we live in a world where we're being bombarded constantly about things that are going wrong or that, um, we are out of control of things that things are happening to us rather than we are actually creating it and we get a bit lost with it and i i try to help clients and family friends or f friends of mine that are a bit sort of lost with whatever they might be going through in life and i always remind them that you are an extension of the universe you are you are um you basically are the universe in a human body and the energy that flows through us and everything that we see with our eyes is this loving, prosperous, well-being energy. It's like a stream that just constantly flows. And it is up to each individual to allow it to keep flowing and not to pinch it off as such. Mm -hmm. And most people that pinch it off will have either some physical problems in their body or they will get ill um, or things will go wrong in their life and so forth. It's because they're not really listening to themselves and they're not listening to that gut instinct that we all have. Uh, even as myself as a child or growing up or going to school and so forth, I was always told, oh, don't do that. Don't listen to your, in a, you know, your intuition. That's wrong. You're not supposed to do, do that. Be logical. Look at your reality. And over time, I realized, well, that is silly because that's the universe talking to us. And this whole reality-based type of living it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. But what happens a lot of times, people that live this reality, they get stuck in it. And they think, well, this is my reality, I cannot change it. Whereas I'm a big believer that you can change it and that, that what you are living is only temporarily. And if you want to change it, you need to focus on what you do want and ignore that reality that you are living that you don't want. Because you have laws of attraction that governs the universe, it organizes everything, and it's a powerful energy that basically 
brings to us what we're asking for, but at the same time, which most people don't understand with laws of attraction, it's not enough just to think about what you're wanting because a lot of times we also think about things we don't want. And with the laws of attraction, it's all inclusive. And what that means is even if you don't want something and you're focusing on it, if it's a worry or if it's something that you're saying no to, you're still drawing it upon yourself because everything is inclusive in the universe. So I, I try to sort of teach people in a way to say to them, well, think of yourself of having a little genie such as Aladdin and all genie can ever say to you is your wish is my command. So you need to watch what you're asking genie because all it's ever going to say to you is your wish is my command. So a lot of times people are saying, well, I don't have enough money. I can't seem to find enough money. I never seem to have enough money. There's not enough money in the bank. And then I just say, well, guess what genie's saying to you? Here's some more of that. Your wish is my command. So that's why I believe that in this wonderful world and universe that we live in, we live in a very inclusive universe. So that means be aware of what you are putting out with your mind and your feelings, because that's what's determining your life experience. So basically it's like saying that um, whatever you are living is a good indication of what you are thinking and feeling. Mm. What you put out in the world is what you get back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when did you learn this? Like, was it through the gifts? Was it, I mean, how, when did you learn this for yourself? Well, through a lot of different directions. So, um, I've read a lot of books. I've connected to a lot of different people. Um, and I've, uh, being amongst really wonderful people such as the lady here in Australia um, and she had given me her interpretation and slowly I, I allowed my own interpretation. So it was like things were coming my way and a lot of times I might not have understood it, but as time went on, I noticed in my own life. So when I was focusing or worrying about something I didn't want, it showed up and I realized, oh, wow it does actually work. And then I learned more about the laws of the universe, such as laws of attraction. I would read books about it. Um, you can, you can do dwell into the whole quantum physics, um, scientific side of it as well. So, or you can get to the more um, simpler side of it. So I read up on a lot of those things and I really tried to implement them in my life. And over time I realized, wow, this does really work. So uh, I'll give you a wonderful example of it. Um, when I was living in New York, I went to um, Los Angeles for a year to study. Um, apart from doing what I do, I'm also a filmmaker and um, director. I went to do a course in Los Angeles and I had the wonderful opportunity of driving across your wonderful country by car. I did that several times, but this was my first time I was doing it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was with my friend, we were driving across, it took us five days from New York to Los Angeles. We stopped in all these wonderful towns and places along the way. But I knew when I was gonna to get to Los Angeles, you need a car. In New York, you don't need a car. In Los Angeles, you do. And I had an idea of what I wanted. I wanted a Mini Cooper. Um, and I was imagining in my mind, because I knew how it works, that I'm going to have my little Mini Cooper. I'm going to be driving around in my little Mini Cooper. It's going to be black in colour um, and it's going to be easy to get it. Um, even though the car that I wanted maybe costs a little bit extra than I thought I had the money, but I knew that somehow the universe will provide it for me. So I just kept thinking, okay, I've got my little car. It's working out for me. I, I got the loan I required. It all fell into place and so forth. So this was constantly going on in my mind. And this happened a few weeks even before I had left New York to go to LA. So, um, I arrived in Los Angeles and I was lucky to have a car to use. Uh, my friend's um, friend gave me his car to use in the meantime. And I was picking up a bit of furniture that I found on Craigslist that people were giving away for free and I was going to pick it up. And one day I was coming back from uh, picking up a wonderful side table and I happened to see a um, place where they were selling cars and there were a few Mini Coopers there. And I thought, okay, let's go and have some fun. So I went um, um, and stopped in front of these, um, the wonderful sales um, place and I was looking at the cars and 
there were a couple, there was a blue one, there was a red one, and there was a white one. And I was looking at them and they were really cute little cars. And the salesperson came out and asked me, oh, are you looking for a car? I said, yes, I'm looking. Um, and then I didn't really even say anything. And the gentleman said, you know what? I think I've got your car in the back. So um, I thought, okay, let's go. So he took me through the showroom and we went in the back of the um, building. Um, in the back, they were washing a few cars. And there was a black um, little um, Mini Cooper. It was sort of like, they called it Midnight um, Blue, which basically looked like it was black. It was really sure. dark. Um, and I saw it and that instant I felt something. I was like, wow, there's my car. <laughs> and uh, within three days, I was driving that car. Now, the funny thing about this was the actual, um, I have to write this down, the actual, we call this number plates, uh, what do you guys call it in America, the registration plate, is that what you license guys call plate. it? License, license plate. License plate, that's it, yeah. license plate. Uh, we call it the registration plate, very similar. Um, basically, um, it was, uh, let me just, um, I'm just writing down. Sure. Um, that's right. I'm just writing down what it was. So basically, it wasn't until I actually picked up the car that I realized this, the day when I had settled for the payments. I looked at the um, license plate and it said, num it was six, D for dog, Z for zebra, C for cat, 717. And then basically my jaw dropped. So basically, I was born... December 5th, 1971. Hmm. But I was born midnight, December 5th. So on my birth, sorry, yeah. Um, yes, birth certificate. Sorry, it was mid uh, 1205 I was born, which would have been the 6th of December, but they placed my birth certificate as being the 5th of December. So basically um, on... This is what my um, license plate. So it's basically, it was number six, DZC. My last name is ADZIC. <laughs> I was born in 1971. So when you look at that, isn't that amazing? That is amazing. That's awesome. So that, that was the universe saying, this is your car. This is your car. That's and funny. the actual salesperson said, come over here. I have your car in the back. <laughs> so that time when I was in the car and what a few weeks way before I was driving to go to Los Angeles, I was telling the universe, universe, this is what I'm wanting. This is what I'm looking forward to help me find it. So I put it out there and that's what happened. And I have several stories like this that gives you an example of you are the creative and reality and you can have what you want. You have to be patient but you have to really believe it emotionally in a way that it's yours. And when you do that, the universe will instill on you everything that you desire. That's awesome. Like I, I, I'm a, like, I want to believe that, right? Like I want to believe, like I try, like I, I am, I am trying to recreate my, <clears throat> I mean, we all create our consciousness. We all create a reality, right? We're here now talking to you, you and I are talking like I've, we've created this. I'm trying to create, I'm trying to like change it, right? Like I'm trying to consciously change it so I can show my kids. I have three kids and I want to show them that you there can do four. this too. What's that? Why is it four? Or why would it should be four? Why is it four? Why, why it should be four. Was there going to be another one? Oh no, it's th it's three. I don't know why I did four, but it's three. Okay. okay. I don't know. Are you? I hope not. It's not four. <laughs> Are you seeing something I'm not seeing here? <laughs> oh, Sometimes man. it could be also. Um, did by did you guys by any chance um, miscarry? No. Okay. Um, that could be a reason sometimes, but maybe it means that there could have been four, or there still could be four if you want to. Wow. Then, so not to scare you. No, I just have a have my <laughs> wife know. I'll go make an appointment tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, continue. Um, <laughs> Interrupting you. <laughs> no, you're good. Did I make the four? Did I make the four? Is that why you saw the four? 
I don't know. I do. When you were saying that, I just saw the thoughts. So again, it's just a lot of times what happens in your own consciousness or maybe your wife's consciousness, maybe that was the idea of, oh, I'd like to have four one day. And maybe that was something you guys thought of. Doesn't mean, doesn't always have to mean that in this lifetime you have it, but it is available basically. Hmm. So it's a bit like coming up. I'll let you finish your story. Sorry that I'm interrupting. You're good, man. Basically, before we come into these amazing bodies, we're we're basically conscious beings. We're this consciousness that's in the non-physical, and we're already um, manifesting or we're putting in alignment what we're wanting to do in this lifetime. Anyway, that's my belief as well. So that could be part of it. And no, I know it's awesome. crazy, but that's you know. No, I love it, dude. Paul, you're like we're on the same wavelength. So, like, my thing is, I'm trying to show them that you can change your reality. You can change it like consciously. Like we, they're going to grow up and they're going to hit a point where they're like, you know, they're going to, they're going to become more aware to their consciousness. They're going to, you know, they're going to awaken and they're going to be like, you know, what, what, what is this all about? Like, where am I at? If they ever get to the point where they're unhappy, I want them to be, look at me and say, Hey, look, dad was able to do it. Like dad was able to consciously bring forth something that he really enjoyed, like the podcast, right? Like I really, really, had this vision, like a strong vision of like, it was like I was sleeping or something and like, you know, this, this blowing up and, and getting to that level of, of being able to support me and my family. And, you know, like I had a vision of like interviewing Joe Rogan when he's older and, you know, things like that. And um, like, that's what I love. I love the whole communicating with people like yourself and like bringing this out to the world and le- letting them listen to it and be becoming more confident in the, in their abilities to create their own lives. Like I, I want that for my kids and I want to be that example, um, for them. And, and that's why I do the things that I do. And I, and I try to, um, I try, you know, I, I, I just, I just fight for that, you know, like I, I, I'm in the, I am in the, what do you call it? Um, trenches and I'm, I'm trying to improve on me all the time I'm, I'm trying to look outside the box and be open-minded about ways of doing that and like you're you know you're speaking about higher consciousness and energy and portraying that out to the world like you know i grew up as a catholic and i grew up as uh you know um in a religion that has its traditions and you know i'm at a point now where I'm becoming more curious and more open-minded about life and, and spirituality and reincarnation and energy. And I, and I love it. And, and I want to learn more about it. And the more that I read, the more that I speak to people like yourself, I want to, I want to be around that. And you know, the, the podcast gives me that, it gives me that life, that energy. And I, but that's the thing, right? Like I, I don't want my kid, I don't want to tell my kids, Hey, if you don't like what you're doing, just go get another job. I want to say, Hey, If you don't like what you're doing, let's look at what you love. Let's look at the things that fire you up and then let's create your life based off of that. Because we, you know, as a society, especially in the U S as you've seen, we don't do enough of that. And that's beautifully said what you just said. It's important to do what you love. And um, going back to that idea of creating what you want in the future. And uh, I'll tell the story with Mariana. Um, uh, it was, sorry, Marianne, she, way before she wrote her book, um, we had a conversation about it and I, I had expressed to her, I see this book and I see many other books and many things that you were going to create um, because of this book. And I did explain to her that um, I'm already seeing it and this is what's happening and this is where I'm seeing that you're going to be on wonderful shows and people are going to be interviewing you and people around the world are going to be asking about you and more books are going to come because of that. And this was something that she loved. This was something that she wanted to do for a long time. And it it basically, it was coming from the heart, a bit what you just expressed, that it's important to love what you were doing or do that, what your heart is wanting you to do. And... um, if you really feel it and really believe it more than anything, one way or another, the universe will present it to you. Sometimes it might not be on the timing that you think it needs to happen, but it will show up and it will come to be a part of your existence. 
and I say, allow the universe to present that to you. Don't rush into it. Don't worry about when it's going to come. Your job is basically to ask for what you're wanting. And the universe's job is to bring it all together, to put you in the right place at the right time, to bring all the financial um, situations that you're required to make it happen. Your job is to pretend you've got it, to dream a bit like children. We dream about things which we as humans forget, uh, sorry, adults we forget because we're bombarded about being realistic in life. And the more realistic you are, the more you're living that realistic lifestyle. And if it's not enough, well, you have to imagine something different to be able to manifest it. A bit like what I said earlier on, that the laws of the universe and laws of attraction can only give you whatever you're focusing on. So if you keep looking at your reality and you keep talking about your reality, keep focusing on your reality, you're just going to get more of the same. It might be different. Different people might show up or different situations, but they're the same vibration. So a bit what you mentioned um, regarding for your children, it's so important to allow them to express what makes them happy. Because that what makes them happy allows them to be in an alignment with the universe. And then the universe will converge and bring you all the things that you require in variation that you get to pick and choose what you're wanting. And in uh, going back to that, you mentioned religion. Yes, I, I'm, my background is also um, Orthodox Christian. Um, and not that I'm religious. Uh, I know there is a higher energy out there, whatever you like to call it. It doesn't matter whether it's universe, God, um, energy. There is a form of flowing love, prosperity, and uh, good fortune that flows to everyone. So your job is basically to allow it to flow into your life. And whatever you believe in, it doesn't matter because it's just a thought that you keep thinking in your mind. And you have the ability to change that. So if something that's happening in your life you don't want, stop thinking about it and start thinking and giving attention to what you're wanting. And slowly, in a short period, it takes a bit of time. It's not instant manifestation. Imagine you're driving your car and you're wanting to have a, you know, a little puppy. And all of a sudden that puppy shows up in your lap while you're driving. It, it would be a bit too much to deal with, right? So it's wonderful that we have this buffer period in between of getting what we're wanting. Because the universe knows when to present it to you exactly when you're ready to receive it. Hmm. So coming back to that story, what you were um, explaining about your wonderful children and how you're, you're doing this wonderful job of explaining or helping them achieve their loves of their desires or however sure. you like to express it. And that's what's important. When they feel that, they're able to imagine it, dream about it, and slowly they are forming their future. Because your thoughts and feelings are creating a vibration that are emanating this wonderful energy out into the future. And as you are feeling it and feeling good and feeling happy and pretending you've got it already, it's creating it already in the future. And slowly where you are standing in that in the future, that gap in between will, will disappear eventually. And you will be staring at that desire a bit like what I was talking about the car that I wanted. Yeah, when no, you're, and what you're talking about is, is, you know, what you were talking about earlier about quantum physics, you know, a, a lot of that makes sense. A lot of, you can see it in quantum physics, like, you know, object, objects that are nowhere near each other, like they're, they're, they're connected. You're like, you're talking about the future self, like you start experiencing, like you already have that puppy or you already have that car. It affects the future self, like in, you know, in the quantum world where, you already have it. And then now it's like attracting to you. It's like, you know, it, it makes sense. And people are kind of like, what are you talking about? Well, here's the thing, right? You might have a lot of clutter, like trauma growing up. So like a lot of your reality might be distorted because of your beliefs. And so like, mm -hmm. you can't just simply believe something and get it. Like you're going to have to do a lot of work here and trying to clear that, that trauma out before you can actually feel it with your heart and your mind um, and attract it to your, to your, to your life or to your, to your reality. Like you have to, I've been reading a lot of Joe Dispenza. I was Dr. about to mention that. It's really funny. I was about to say Joe Dispenza is a wonderful example of quantum physics and helping people understand it in that 
particular realm. And he explains it in such a beautiful way that's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll come back after you finish your story regarding trauma. I've had a lot of trauma and a lot of during childhood because of that reason, because of my abilities. But sorry, continue on. No, you're good. I'll I was going to say Joe Dispenza, he can explain it a lot better than I can. But check it, check out his book. I'm looking at it right now. It's I think it's called like Being Supernatural or something like that. Yeah, and he's but, on Instagram as well, which you can follow him as well. And he's really amazing. What he's constantly um, offering. Have you ever talked to him? Sorry, say that again. Have you ever talked to him? I haven't. No, I haven't. No. Um, yeah. So what what were you going to say about the trauma portion of that? Uh, so basically, as a kid, because I I was a bit of a weird kid. Um, and a weird I had this, kid. Yeah, and, you know, I was weird, you know, and I was strange and I had these abilities and, you know, I would say things to people and things would happen. And, you know, I would always, even now, because I have the ability to see things five, 10 steps ahead, when I offer it to people, it freaks them out or they're looking at you as if you have 20 heads on your shoulders. Um, it's a bit, scary they get a bit freaked out by it and it's understandable um so and i used to get teased and bullied and you know i was always the weird kid something wrong with you what's wrong with you why are you doing that and why do you feel like that and why do you say that so and that does play a big part especially as a child and as you grow up you think there's something wrong with you you think you're odd and you know you need medication whatever and who knows probably in the 60s if growing up in the 60s they probably would put me into a mental asylum thinking there's something wrong with this child right so i'm glad that i was born in this period where the human race is a bit more evolved but coming back to dr dispenza and what he talks about and the way he explains it and what i said earlier on i mentioned earlier on that we have the ability to heal ourselves by changing that thought and that feeling that we've got going on in our bodies by basically focusing on how we do want to feel rather than what we are feeling. And it does take time. It's not this overnight thing that, oh, I, I want to be a millionaire and all of a sudden I will become a millionaire. It doesn't happen that quickly. And you don't want it to happen that quickly because imagine it all happening all at once. It's a bit like I heard this saying by someone, I, I, I think it was a lady called Esther Hicks, um, she's a wonderful also um, person that you can find out on um, YouTube and I love her um, way that she presents things and she talks about things and I've probably taken some of her words that she says but um, she said once that imagine we humans are all about wanting everything all at once and she said imagine that all of a sudden all your dinners that you're going to have for the rest of your life show up in your life do you want them all to show up all in your one life? No, you don't want it all to show up that night because what are you going to do with those billions of meals that you're going to be eating for the rest of your life? So it's for us humans in the world we live in, and you mentioned that early on in America and even to a point here in Australia, we're constantly bombarded about, well, you need to have this and you need to have this. And if you don't have this, you can't be happy. And if you don't have this much money in your bank, you can't be happy. And if you don't look like this, there's something wrong with you. We're constantly being dictated by these, you know, um, individuals or governments or societies or groups out there of what is the right way of living. Humans are all about assigning that great leader of this is the rules of living. This is the way you need to live. And if you don't, there's something wrong. And we all try to do that, but we realize it doesn't really work because not every rule in life is for everybody. We just can't. We're not meant to all be the same. We're not meant to follow the same route. And how boring if we all did the same thing, we all looked the same way, and we all basically manifested the same way. Life on planet Earth would be really boring. So that idea that going back to being weird and being strange as a kid, I'm actually very grateful for it because today I'm very confident in the idea of who I am and what I do. And I know how to explain myself. I know that if somebody gives me a hard time or if they, they will challenge me, I actually have really good answers to present to them. And as a child, I didn't really have that. Or as a teenager, I didn't really understand it. I wasn't able to sort of express it because I wasn't evolved enough at that time. I, I believe now I am a lot more evolved and I'm evolving every single day. Um, but 
I've got to the point where I'm very confident in what I say and understand because there are wonderful people such as um, Dr. Joe Dispenza that are out there that do have an amazing following and do express it in a way that is easy to understand because a lot of times what I'm doing is still a bit airy fairy for a lot of people so they're like oh what are you talking about whereas I love the fact that he explains it through science and because we humans and the society we live in we've been trained to well if it's um, in the science world and if it's um, you know something that we can show well then it must be true so whereas a lot of times when I'm talking to someone or giving them some ideas about something I'm talking about a future that haven't yet hasn't yet um, happened so they have to have a, a bit of faith in me that I'm telling them what's going to happen and it's not only when it does happen that they actually believe me a lot of times when I do readings for people I'll be talking about something and they'll be looking at me going this guy's lost his marbles. Uh, that's an expression. I don't know if that's an, I can't remember in, in America if they use that, meaning that there's, you know, you've lost your mind. You don't know what you're talking sure. about. But a lot of times what happens um, as, as the time moves on, these things that I do say yeah. do happen. Like you said, so, you're five steps ahead, right? Well, I, I say I'm five steps ahead. I don't know if it's five steps ahead, but I, I do have the ability to see things, you know, in the future. And that's why coming back to that idea that I love the fact that um, Dr. Dispenza has that medical background plus he has that quantum physics um, expression that helps those people that are critics or that, you know, might not believe in it. There is actually evidence that what we as intuitives are doing, it does actually happen it does exist and that we are multi-dimensional beings and that we have the ability to manifest what we want in our lives coming back to what you were saying with your children that by encouraging them to believe that what they want in life is okay and it's perfect and even if they make mistakes it doesn't matter they can keep asking for more and they can keep trying again because there are no rules in the universe the universe is not gonna fling something out of the sky and throw it at you and hit you on the head and say you're a bad person because you did that nothing no such thing like that's ever going to happen yes there's a lot of humans and a lot of um society um beliefs out there that will do that to you but I, I say, well, try not to listen to that. Listen to your own intuitive nature and allow that to be your guiding light in life. And if you do, you will achieve your results. You will manifest what you want. A bit like what you said as a father. And from what I'm sensing around you, you've got that great ability to um, express that to your children. And I believe that they are starting to get it even at the age that they're at. So you're on the right path from what I'm intuitively understanding. So... You're doing a good job. Thank you, man, Paul. That means a lot to me, brother. You five <laughs> steps ahead, man. I definitely take take that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, you know, look, it's you know, people say, "Oh, you're just saying that to make him feel better," and it's not because when I do readings for people, when I talk to people, they know me. I'm very honest. I will never tell somebody just what they want to hear because what's the point? They'll call me back or they say, "Oh, you said this and it wasn't like that." Um, and I'm not saying I'm, I'm human. I make mistakes. Don't get me wrong. But um, it's always about getting people to think in a certain way to get them to the place where they want to be. So a bit like your wonderful children, it's helping them understand that what they want is wonderful, it's perfect, it's available to them in the universe. And if for some reason along the way they change their mind, fine, ask for more. There is no shortage. That's another thing I wanted to talk about. In the universe, there is no shortage. Despite the world we live in, despite um, what's going on on the planet right now, and despite the lack mentality that we've got in a lot of society, um, what's going on on the planet right now with this whole COVID thing, it's horrible. Yes, I agree in many ways. But there's also a lot of good that's coming out of it. There's a lot of people that are transitioning, I agree, which is transitioning meaning moving from their physical life to a non-physical life, dying as we humans like to use. But they're not dying, they're transitioning to a non-physical consciousness, which eventually they'll come back again in another human body. But coming back to the idea of humans have been 
wanting a change on the planet for a long time. We've been worrying about the planet and what we're doing to it. We're worrying about the pollution. We're worrying about the waterways. We're worrying about all these things that uh, we're destroying the planet as such. And I say to people, well, think of it like this, and science is starting to realize it. Since we've stopped and since this COVID has happened, the waterways in many parts of the world have cleared up. The pollution around the world has actually come to a level where it's okay. Um, humans are becoming more conscious of themselves and the people around us and the society around us. We're becoming nicer to each other. We're aware of what's going on more so than we ever have been. And these are indirectly happening because of what this COVID has presented. And I know it's a horrible way of it happening, but that's the only way that humans actually change. Mm. Yeah. So, and science and um, scientists at the moment are showing up and proving that yes, there's less pollution on the planet. There is waterways that are clearing up. The mm. nature is starting to thrive again. And I say to people, and there's a lot of teachers out there that say this, that the world we live in is this abundant, self-reliant, self-healing organism and it has the ability to replenish itself despite what we do to it it will take time yes but we've got an example happening right now with this covid of how the planet is healing itself i think and it's like collective people, thought too and i don't mean to so cut you off like co collective thought right i feel yeah, like this yeah, yeah i think this was i think this pandemic was a collective like agreement with the entire world. Like we did not like we were, we were where we were at. People were complaining about, you know, what they were doing, the commute the pollution, this, this and that. Like, I feel like we as a collective called us into being to free us, even though we can't see that, even though it's terrible people yes, people have died or transitioned as you call it. But at the end of the day, look at where we're at now. Like we're enjoying our families more. We're getting outside more. We're, we're actually learning that we can do other things besides that daily commute and, and be present for our families and, you know, be more productive outside of work and work. Isn't that serious? Like people are starting to realize that. Yeah. Well, it's work is a part of our life. It's not everything in our lives. And a bit like we said that, yes, it's, unfortunate that I, I lost a few people to COVID as well. Um, only because they also had pre-existing -ex conditions and they were a bit older. And, but I understand that it is sad and it is sad for those immediate people that have lost these loved ones. And it's horrible. There's no words about it, but I know myself the way I feel that they're not gone. They're there. They're not in the non-physical. I lost my father about three years ago. And I know that he's in the non-physical. I sense him all the time. Even though he's not there in the physical body, I can feel him in the non-physical. So, and, and that's why a lot of this work and a lot of these teachings um, that we humans are starting to open our minds to, it's a different way of approaching life on planet Earth and to celebrate the fact that we are all here, we are all different, we are all of different backgrounds, we look different, we think differently, we believe in different things. The, the, it's just amazing how, how wonderful the different cultures, the different uh, foods that we have, the different belief systems that we have, the different approaches to life that we have. It's that which we need to look at and go, that's what's special. That's what's wonderful. We don't want to be the same. We don't need to be the same. We don't need to believe in the same thing. As I said earlier on, imagine a world where we're all the same. It would be, for me, I think it would be horrible because it's like, imagine that it's like just life being vanilla. You know, mm -hmm. let's go to the ice cream shop. What flavor do you want? Oh, I'll have vanilla. Or do you want this vanilla or that vanilla, right? You know, it'd be like, oh, okay. It, it gets a bit boring, right? <laughs> So that's why I think we humans need to, and this is what's helping us with the, the evolving, the consciousness of evolving. And we've entered the age of Aquarius. You've heard of that, you know, there's that song age of Aquarius. Well, we used to be in the age of Pisces. Um, do you know that on the back of people's cars, you see the fish? Yeah, yeah. The sticker? Yeah. Well, that's the age of Pisces. 
and a lot of people in religious people is God and uh, or Jesus, but Jesus was Jesus was that evolved amazing being that was the age of Pisces. Hmm. So, and again, it's um, I don't want to sort of upset anyone or anything like that because it's not about upsetting anyone. It's about just saying that now we've entered the age of Aquarius, and it's about the mass consciousness. It's the evolving of our minds of hum, human beings in planet Earth, and you've noticed that we're all about becoming more communities and doing things together and helping each other. It's not about in the age of Pisces was about that one leader or that one company that controlled everything, but it's starting to shift. It's all about these communities that are coming sure. together and wanting to work together and so forth. No, it's this like, so I've been listening. What is it? Paul Selig. Um, I've been reading a lot of his stuff. He's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and he has, you know, he, he talks about the Christ that's been with, within us, right? Like we are mm -hmm. all, we have the, the, the being that you're talking about that's inside of us is the universe, yes. right? Like yeah. we are God. The second coming of Christ is that realization. So like, that's what he talks about in his book is, yeah. um, what is it? Um, alchemy. His new book is called Alchemy. And he, and he talks about the the coming, you know, the second, that's what they talk about. The second coming of Christ, everybody, you know, everybody's heard of, everybody thinks that the second coming of Christ is the realization that you are that, like the Christ is inside yes, of you. Exactly. Where that, the teachings of, um, in religious um, sayings, it's about Christ, but Christ is a part of us. He's a being that, well, he was a human being that, showed up to teach us these things since hey we're more than these physical bodies you are he said you are god you are you are me i am you so it's that realizing within ourselves that we are god that we are an extension of god we are an extension of the universe and imagine that's what we are we have that everything that's made this universe we're living um in it's flowing through us. It's the most amazing power and love and prosperity. And that's, I think, what we forget because we get so bombarded in work and um, in all these life, daily life experiences that we forget who we are. And it's important that we listen to ourselves again because that Jesus, that God, that universe, that uh source whatever you want to call it that's talking to you through your gut instinct and your feelings it's there it's awakening you and it's telling you come on listen to yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. get yourself back to being who you are and live life and be happy and prosper and love everything that you were doing and love all those around you despite you might not understand them it's okay but understand that there is only a source of love in the universe. There is no bad in the universe, despite what we're told. There sure. is no source of badness. There's only a source of love, prosperity, and goodwill. Mm -hmm. So I, with all clients that I speak to, and including uh, Miriam, I would always say that you get to choose what your life is, and you get to make it what you want it to be. And you can start... And whenever you want in your life to start being more conscious of it yeah. and start making what you want and keep asking for more because the universe will never say no to you. I'm just worried you that, you know, like the, the, the request of, you know, cause I, I, I've been trying to channel, I've been trying to, you know, be more intuitive and get in touch with my higher self or, or that place that soul that is all of my lifetimes. Right gain some uh, wisdom from them. And it's like, like I'll get into this, this relaxation mode and I'll, and I'll listen and I'll say, you know, I, I want this, you know, I want the, I want the podcast to get big. I want it to, you know, be able to change lives. And then like, what I'll, what I'll get back is, you know, it's like, you know, that's just, you know, basically saying, Trey, that's a small self. That's what the small self wants. What, 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 what am I here for? You know, it's always coming back to it's, it's about the learning. It's not so I, I remember running and, and just out of nowhere, I'm just running and it's like, it's not about the podcast. I'm like, what? it's not about the podcast. It's about the learning. It's about the journey. And like, it's like as much as like, I, you just got to realize too, you know, you got to realize the small self and what it is, you know, like, yes, the podcast is something that I want to see get larger. So that way I can, 
show others that you can definitely change your reality. Like you can definitely do that. And I want to be that example. And I want to be able to stand on a mountaintop and say, look, I've, I've done this. I've become more awakened to the universe. You know, th- these are the steps that I took. I believed in myself. I worked my ass off. I opened up to the universe and I was able to change it. And then when I channeled my truer self, they're like, yeah, man, it's not about that. It's about learning. It's about the journey. And it's like, well, what about the podcast? Well, the podcast is nothing, man. It's a small self. And it's like, shit. It's a part of it. It's a part of it. You're, what you were doing with these podcasts are helping other people that are seeking and asking for more. You're helping them to understand themselves and to understand how to find a way within themselves to open up to the universe. You will know when you are aligned to the universe is when you're happy when you're feeling good, Mm, mm. there's your indication. You don't need any more than that. When you're doing your podcast and you're having fun and you're loving it, you have opened yourself to the universal alignment. And those people that are listening to you will hear it loud and clear. Someone that's in alignment has so much more of a greater, uh, how do I say it, influence over those people around them 10 times more than someone that is not aligned. Sure. Never forget that. Sure. So your, your feelings of feeling good is your indication you're doing. Well, I don't like to say the right thing, but you're doing what you need for yourself. I love when that. When you feel good, you are happy. And when you are happy, you know, you are aligned to the universe and whatever you are doing is right for you right there and then. Going back to there are no rules. Yes, be selfish. If you need to do this for yourself, it's okay. Because when you do it for yourself, you're in alignment. And it's allowing what you want to come in your life or how you want to help the universe. Well, it's going to flow through you and you're going to be affecting people all around you. And eventually that's going to help them change or get what they want. They'll get to that happy, feeling, wonderful state. And then they will do their selfish thing that they need to do for themselves. And then boom, they'll do whatever they need to do, which will affect other people. And it's a ripple effect. So there's nothing wrong with being selfish to get what you need. That small little thing that you said, we need to all do that individually. It starts off with the self. I say to people, When you want to find something in life that you are seeking, first find it internally. When you find it internally, everything you are seeking will show itself in the physical world. Hmm. A bit like trauma. You mentioned that earlier on. People are seeking externally how to heal their trauma. But it's not about the external elements. It's about what's going on internally that you are focusing on. That trauma that you experience, you're giving attention to it, you're giving it life. And then laws of attraction keeps giving you more of it. And then because you're focusing on it, life will start bringing you more examples of that and you'll keep living it. So it's important to clear it up internally. Seek the clearance within yourself. And when you heal that within yourself, everything around you will heal automatically if that makes any sense. It does make sense. You go within. Like, and they say that to me a lot too. Like I'll be running and I'll hear the voice, you know, it's like my son go within and it's like, all right, all right how the fuck do you do that? But I'll try it. You know, like well, I'll, I'll, you'll figure it out. There are no rules. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. There are different people will find it in different. Somebody's going to walk into a church and see this wonderful candle or hear this wonderful music or just sit down or just stand there and feel this energy. They've aligned. Somebody might go to a ball game and sit there and have the best time ever and goosebumps and go, Oh my God, I'm aligned. Somebody might go to a, a, a club somewhere and hear some music and feel fantastic. They're aligned. Somebody might go in the backyard and play in their garden and they feel fabulous. They're aligned. There is not one way of alignment. There are millions, billions of ways of aligning yourself. Mm. Does that make sense? That makes sense. You don't need to run to an ashram in India to be spiritual. You can do it anywhere. You can stop yourself. A great way of doing it is by meditating or just relaxing or wash some dishes. That's a meditation, right? Go in the garden, put your hands in the dirt and put, you know, um, 
a few little plants together. That's meditation. You know, do some drawings. That's meditation. Yeah. Lie down for a bit and just relax. That's meditation. Go to the beach, stand in uh, front of the waves and just look at the waves and just enjoy the sound. That's meditation. I so I'm fortunate that. enough in Sydney, we have many um, beaches and they're all around us. So when I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed and I, I have too much going on in my mind, I go down to the beach and I just stand there and I put my feet in the water and I just either stand there or I sit down and I just listen and I just experience what is in front of me. And I say how wonderful and how lucky I am to be sitting here and feeling good about my life. The fact that I've got a beach that I can come to, the fact that I can chill out and not worry about anything, the fact that the universe provides me everything that I need. And I'm looking forward to the abundance of everything that is possible to me. Mm. So it's talking to yourself. So give me an example of what you want in life. Uh, what do I want in life? <sighs> like, where do I want to be? Like, where do I want to, as a, as a career? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Whatever doesn't you matter. want. I want to be able to podcast professionally. Okay. All right. So let's, let's do it this way. So I'm going to go into a, it's, I'm going to really channel now. It's, so give me a second and you're going to hear it. I'm so looking forward to becoming one of the best known podcast people out there in the universe and in the US and internationally. I love the fact that I have the ability to speak to people all around the world and listen to their stories. And then I will present that to people and have fun and have a, a joke with them. And what I'm presenting, many people are listening and it's helping them understand themselves and helping them to achieve their results by listening to what they're wanting at the same time by listening to me. I love what I do and the people that listen to me feel really good when I do my work and I talk on my podcast I feel this vibration within myself and I know that I'm aligned to the universe and I'm noticing that more people are listening to me I'm noticing that I'm attracting more and more people in my life uh, that want to listen to me and want to hear more about what I want to say I'm noticing that all these wonderful people that are out there that are spiritual even people that may have a lot of success in life are starting to contact me and wanting me to be part of their um, conversation and asking me to be on my show on my podcast and then all of a sudden I'm getting more people that are introducing me through their outlets that they have going on in their life and I'm noticing that I'm becoming abundant I'm noticing that companies are wanting to sponsor me to give me the money to do this even greater and to make more money and in turn I'm helping others by giving them a sense of self and giving them the ability to create their own wonderful um, dreams in their life by letting them understand that they can be and do and have whatever they they want. I'm very prosperous. I'm doing a wonderful job. I love what I'm doing. I'm feeling fantastic. Mm. Now, what, now, what were you, what were you channeling and where were you channel, channeling that from? I was listening to the universe. You were listening to the universe. And I just started talking. And what Did you is feel something? Yes. Yeah. I felt something like my, my, my heart, like I just, my, my vibration like went up. Like that's all it is. That's all it is. It's not, you're not going to get someone, it's not going to feel like someone's punching you in the head. It's just, it's just that feeling of, I feel good. Mm -hmm. I feel alive. I feel grateful. I'm here. I'm exactly where I need to be, no matter where I am in life. I'm exactly where I need to be. And I have the ability to make more. I have the ability to ask for more. The universe will present it to me. It doesn't matter how much debt I have in the bank. It doesn't matter what has happened to me in the past. It doesn't matter how many disappointments with love I've had in the past. It doesn't matter what has happened in my life. I am here where I am. And I have the ability to start fresh. And I have the ability to have what I want by listening to myself and expressing and talking about it. I'm going to give attention to what I want. I'm looking forward to new love in my life that's, that loves me and appreciates me and gives me that feeling of I'm worthy and I feel good about myself. I'm looking forward to the abundance that is in the universe and I want some of it for myself. I want lots of money in my bank. I want millions in my bank. I deserve it. I'm welcoming it in my life. 
I want to feel good. I want to lose some weight. And I'm so grateful for the fact that I might be overweight. I understand that I want to lose some weight. So I'm looking forward to losing it. So I'm going to be grateful for the fact that I did get fat, let's say. And because I got fat, now I realize I don't want to be fat anymore. So let's start losing it. And let's start feeling better about myself. And let's start looking at this is how I'm going to look. And this is how I do look. And this is how I feel. And, and I'm looking better each day. I'm losing some weight. And look at me. I'm looking skinny. And people are telling me I'm looking skinny. And I feel really fat. Fabulous. And you know what? Maybe I want a new job and I'm looking forward to a new job. I don't like this new job, so I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to think about my new job. I love my new job and I feel good about it. And I look forward to meeting all these new people that I'm going to be working with. And I'm going to love the work that I'm going to do. It's about thinking, talking, looking in the direction of where you want to go in life and ignoring what you don't want. And in a short period, the universe and genie is going to say, he wishes my command, here's some more. And you will notice that your life starts moving in that direction. One step at a time. One step at a time. Man, this has been on fire. Paul, how can people connect with you? Um, well, they can connect um, through my website. So uh, it's uh, www.paulpsychicmedium.com. Um, and they can book uh, a session with me through that, or they can contact me. Um, it doesn't always have to be um, readings. I used to do workshops uh, in New York, which I'm trying to create uh, through all these new ways of Zoom and so forth, which I'm trying to understand how to work <laughs> it as well. Um, so I can do workshops with people and help them get into that conscious level of understanding who they are and what they want in life and feeling good about no matter where they are in life, that's what's important. Because I've got many things I want to still do in life and achieve, but we're not going to get to do everything. That's why we're eternal. That's why we keep coming back to more, li more lives on planet Earth. So the most important is live your life now. Don't, don't worry about the things you think you don't have because they will show up. Don't think because something happened to you in the previous part of your life and it hurt you and it got you down. Don't live that anymore. Don't let that have power over you anymore because you can change it by the way you're looking at it and say, I'm not doing that anymore. I want to do this and I will do this. I'm going to feel better about myself. And slowly I'm going to write a list of the things that I want and I'm going to pretend I've got it and I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to achieve it one day at a time. Mm. And I'm going to say to myself, I'm doing a good job. I love I'm that. a good father and I've got a great podcast. I love the fact that I'm doing it. I love the fact that I live in a country that allows me to do this. I love the fact that people want to listen to what I've got to say. I love the fact that I can talk to crazy people such as Paul in Australia. <laughs> that bangs on about all these different things. I love Dude, the fact I can that listen I can... to you all day, man. Okay. So that's what this is all about. It's about understanding that we have the power to do what we want in life. You can be and do and have whatever you want, but it's the realization of it first. It's about believing it's possible. As I said, I've gone through a lot of difficulties in life and I still do sometimes, but I don't look at it as a problem. I do sometimes. I look at it and go, oh, what's this hairy thing? But then I say, how do I get to here rather than dealing with this hairy thing? So I firstly got to ignore it. And I say, okay, it is what it is. It's helped me understand. It showed up in my life because I was giving attention to it. So I don't want it anymore. So I'm going to stop thinking about it. And now I'm going to think about the things that make me feel good and remind myself that life is fine. And now I'm going to focus or write a list of the things I do want and I'll give that attention. And in a short period, laws of attraction will bring it to me. And my main job right now is even if I'm miserable and I'm feeling down and I'm feeling overweight and I'm feeling frustrated and I don't have enough money, I'm going to first look at the things that are working in my life. I'm alive. I'm healthy. Um, I've got wonderful people in my life. Um, I, I, I have the ability to think. I have the ability to focus. Um, I have the ability to write a list of what I want. Um, and slowly, I will get myself to a better place. And each day I'll feel better. Each day I'll notice that I'm aligning to the universe. When I feel good, even if it's for a second, there's my indication that I am changing and I'm aligning to the universe. 
<clears throat> bit like what you asked me, how do I know? When you feel happy, you feel content, that's when you know. I feel content even right now. Even if it's now. for five minutes, even if it's for a second, there's your indication it's possible. And the more you do the work and the more you relax and the more you take some time to just chill out, have a glass of wine, go for a run, sit and watch a movie, have a laugh, uh, what, you know, read a book, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What you're doing doesn't matter. It's about just calming yourself down and saying, I'm okay. What's next? The universe is flowing. It's a stream that constantly flows. It's only you that stops it. No one else. Your boss doesn't do it. Your family doesn't do it. Your lover doesn't do it. Your next door neighbor doesn't do it. Your government doesn't do it. Your president doesn't do it. You do it. So what's great about that, you have the ability to change it. I always say to people, whatever you're wanting, it's behind that door. Open it vibrationally. It's sitting there. Everything you've thought about, everything you wanted, that instant you think about something, it creates itself in the universe. It's sitting and waiting for you. All you need to do is chill out and stop worrying about it. And you don't have to keep thinking about it because it's already made. you are just got to chill out and relax and go, okay, I am where I am and I've got to feel good about where I'm standing and I know that that what I'm wanting is there. So feel good. Feel happy, feel appreciative, and slowly where you are standing and that what you're wanting, you will notice it starts to show up. Hmm. Wow, Paul, this has been amazing, man. Like, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on this show. You're welcome. My pleasure. It was wonderful talking to you. And I love the work that you were doing. And I love and appreciate everything that you were doing so far. And all those wonderful people out there that might be listening and listening to what I'm banging on about. I'm not special. I'm like everyone else. I'm a human being that makes mistakes. I'm a human being that feels emotion. I'm a human being that feels sad sometimes. I'm a human being that feels exhilarated sometimes. That's what life's all about. It's not just about chocolate cake and roses. It's about the contrast. Because through this contrast in life that we go through, that's when we know what we truly want. And we found it. We can't get what we want. That yin and yang that they talk about. There's only light in the universe. And I say to people, focus on that. If you don't want something and something's going on in your life that you don't care about or it doesn't feel good, start ignoring it. I know it's hard sometimes if you're in it. It's a job that you need because you need to make money. It's okay. Okay. I'm grateful for the fact that I do have this job and I'm grateful for the fact that I'm looking forward to something new and I'm looking forward to finding something new. And even if it's, I'm not sure what I'm wanting, I'm just going to write a list of the things that make me happy. And eventually I will find something or I will connect to something that I want to do. And eventually the universe will start showing me options. And even if it takes me a bit of time to get that job, it's okay because the universe knows exactly what to bring you. And it brings you the best version of whatever you're asking for. And that can be in anything. Same as you manifesting your podcast. You're on the right path. You're doing exactly what you need to do. You don't need to be anywhere else but where you're standing. And those children you've got are listening to you better than you can imagine. And they'll teach you a lot of stuff, which they're the little boys teaching you something really cool. I think it's the little... Who's the youngest? Uh, my daughter, Kara. And is the boy afterwards? Where's the boy? The boy is the oldest. He's, He's the oldest. Okay he's there's something about him that I'm picking up and it, his playfulness and it's his rawness that I love. And he's going to be teaching you a lot. And I'm sure he has already. And some words that he's going to express, you're going to look at him and go, wow, where'd that come from? It's probably happened already. It happens every day. He says yeah. things to me that I'm just like, that was not me when I was that age. Like he just yeah. uses words that are just funny as I all get up. He's very sensitive. He's a sweet, not that your uh, your girls aren't, but he's got a sensitivity that he'll surprise you all the time. Absolutely. Paul, uh, I love this. Like, this has just been my favorite so far. Well, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I'm very gr grateful and very humbled by that as well. As I said, um, I find it hard to sort of take compliments because I just think I'm me. 
I'm a weirdo that does this and, you know, I love what I do and I like to have fun with it. And I try not to take life too serious because life is about living. And I say to people, no matter what is happening, no matter where you are in life, it's not as bad as you think. You can change it by focusing on where you want to be and giving your attention towards that 99 percent of the time and being patient and finding a way to appreciate even that shitty part of your life that's happening right there and then because it's helped you decide on where you want to be because mm-hmm. without it you wouldn't decide on where you want to be so be grateful now that hairy thing there okay i don't want you to be there but thank you for being there because now i know that i don't want that i want this so now i can focus myself there and slowly i will get there whatever it is there are no rules in the universe, despite what we're told. You are, not, you are not a bad person when you make mistakes. You are not a bad person when you, you decide something that didn't work out so well for you or others around you. You are human. You're meant to make mistakes. Humans are meant to live life and then decide on what we want and then move forward. You're not meant to have all the answers. You came here to live life. And then through living life and experiencing, you decide, what's next? And then Jeannie's sitting there, your wish is my command. What else do you want? How wonderful. I want to say thank you to Paul for coming on the show and just having a great, positive conversation. If you guys want to check out more information about Paul, you can do that by going to www.paulpsychicmedium.com. That is his webpage. You can book uh, some time with him and get to know him a little bit better over there if you guys want to check me out you can go to your excuse me (laughs) i changed oh that's going to take some getting used to you can go to treedowns.com and leave me a message over there and uh, i'll get back to you but in the meantime you guys have a, a very i hope you guys had a great christmas and i hope you have an even better new year i hope 2021 is oh how can it not be better than 2020 but i hope it is definitely better for you This has been fun, guys. I hope you have a great and amazing week, and I'll talk to you later.